Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today I am at the Mono Cliffs Provincial Park with my friend AJ over here. What's up guys? And uh, I'm doing a video that has been requested by a couple of you, uh, which is a review on the Hasselblad. So uh, the Leica review did really well, and I hope you guys like this one as well. Just gotta fill the old Hasselblad. Is that the Hasselblad? This is the Hasselblad. Yeah, gotta fill the old, the old gal. Wait, <laughs> You're winding it up? Oh, that's just a film. Yeah. You're not winding it. Oh, no, no, no. The movie cameras that you had to wind oh, up. Oh, no, no, nothing of that. I thought I was seeing I another wish. one. <laughs> I thought maybe they were coming back. <laughs> maybe one day. Yeah. So I just loaded the first roll into the Hasselblad. I'm going to start with uh, Portra 400 and then I also have a roll of HP 5. Although you guys have seen uh, many other videos of me with the Hasselblad, um, and I have used it for quite some time now on some pretty big trips. Um, it is still a relatively new camera to me. Um, I've only owned this one for a couple months now, so it hasn't even been a year, but I have used um, Hasselblads before from friends that have actually been nice enough to loan it out to me, and that's really what kind of got me uh, sucked into shooting not only medium format, but shooting square, um, the, the, the SLR kind of format with the waist level finder and now it's probably my favorite camera overall. A lot of the time when I'm going out to shoot, I'm usually deciding between, uh, for the film side of stuff at least, I'm deciding between if I want to take the Leica M2 or the Hasselblad, and a lot of the time it just comes down to what I'm shooting. So generally, if I'm shooting something where I really want it on color and I really want um, just kind of the highest quality um, in terms of uh, image latitude and depth of field, I'll go for something with the Hasselblad. If it's something a little faster paced, like if I'm doing street work or more documentary stuff, that's when I'll lean more towards the M2. But it's really just the right tool for the right job. But more and more I find myself leaning towards the Hasselblad for pretty much anything. And the M2 is kind of struggling to get uh, time uh, out shooting, uh, which is something I'm trying to work on a bit more as I kind of try to perfect uh, my black and white work on that. One of the other things is also um, with people when they shoot film, they'll always say stuff like, oh, it slows me down, or I like the way it makes me think. For me, at least, it makes me learn more uh, to kind of premeditate the shot or like think exactly how I want it in terms of what my settings are gonna be, what my exposure is gonna be, where with something like 35 millimeter film, I'll just kind of fire off the shot because I know I have a roll of 36. I've never used anything other than the 80 millimeter on the Hasselblad. And the 80 millimeter is basically like a 50 millimeter equivalent in 35 millimeter format terms um, to me is just it's exactly what i want and when i'm going up to a scene or going up to something that i want to photograph i know ahead of time like where i have to position myself in order to get the composition that i want so i really enjoy knowing the camera very well and not really experimenting or uh, messing around with kind of the formula that i found uh, just because it works so well for me there's no reason for me to really change that at all I was gonna model for me today. So we have Bob's gonna stand in for me, take some portraits on this. Um, people is definitely something that I'll lean more towards with the Hasselblad for shooting. Um, I definitely think that's where it shines. Uh, I think a lot of my favorite portraits have been taken on it. And yeah, it's always just good to have kind of like the human element in photos as well. We originally came here for cliffs, but there's all this water here too, which is kind of cool. I like the dead trees over here in that corner. Like, oh, that area. Those always look really cool. Jump, Buzz. Jump for the views. I can't. Oh! <laughs> I thought that was a rock. <laughs> 
I thought that was a rock. You baited me. This guy baited me. <laughs> this guy baited me on camera. What the hell? I thought oh that was a rock. Oh my god. <laughs> you thought that was a rock? It was, it, it, it looked more, that. Oh my the, god. The tree. That is so funny. I was about to say, you can almost step completely across and you just go straight into it. That whole situation I know is going to seem like it's scripted, but that was honest to God what just happened. The discrimination. Another big thing that I really like about the whole Hasselblad system uh, is how modular the system is. Um, for me, when I first bought it, I bought the body, the waist level viewfinder, and the lens, and then I bought the back separately. Um, and that's really cool because if something does go wrong or something breaks, it's very easy just to swap out that whole part. And again, the really big advantage of this kind of a system is you can have multiple backs with different film in it. So you can have one back with, let's say, uh, black and white film, and then in the other one will have color film. So you can switch without having to actually finish off a roll, which is a huge advantage compared to uh, other film cameras. Another really good thing about the waist level viewfinder is stuff just like that where you think you see a shot, you get it already, you line it up, um, but because what you're seeing, the viewfinder is exactly how the photo is going to look, uh, you'll know if it's worth it to take the photo. So a lot of the times I'll actually stop myself from taking a shot with the Hasselblad, where with something like the Leica with like the rangefinder system, where you're just seeing the window with the one focusing patch, um, all chances are I'm just going to take the shot if I've actually gone through the effort of focusing and pulling it to my eye. A lot of the time when people are buying Hasselblads, they're always kind of questioning, or at least even for me, I was really questioning which version of the Hasselblad I should get. Um, I was looking a lot at the 501 CMs, uh, even the 503s, uh, but I eventually settled with a 500 cm. The main benefits with going up to something like a 501 would be if you use a lot longer lenses, like anything past 80 millimeter, because you don't get the viewfinder vignetting, which is obviously helpful if you're using a longer lens. So if you're gonna be using an 80 millimeter like I am, the 500 cm is gonna be more than enough. You're not gonna get any blackout in the viewfinder. And if you wanna go with a 500 cm for whatever reason it may be, and you wanna use a longer lens, the vignette's only gonna to happen to the viewfinder and not your final image, so you're not gonna be ruining anything by putting a longer lens on the body. Okay, we left like that kind of dead forest that's behind me, and now we're basically in the Shire. We got Bilbo over here. Please. I want to get the shot of Boz's bun with those pretty flowers in the background. Um, but he's too tall, so what I'm actually going to do is flip the Hasselblad upside down to see if uh, it'll actually work because it's a waist level, right? So instead of looking down, I'll be looking up. This is actually so ridiculous. Like this? Yeah. That was the most ridiculous photo I've ever taken. fan of the Hasselblad. I am. He just said the viewfinder is better than real life, so. It's better quality than real life. And we'll get to that on the next part of this review. A lot of the time when people first pick up a Hasselblad or something with a waist level viewfinder, uh, they'll be kind of very excited about how real and three-dimensional it looks. And that's something that you can change around and kind of sort out to exactly how you want. You can have things like a split prism, uh, you can have a rule of thirds kind of grid going on it, you can have it completely blank, whatever really best fits your needs. Some people really like the split prism. I tend to like just the completely blank screens. So I know there's the screens like the Acumat screens, which are incredibly popular. I had the first opportunity to look, actually look through a blank one uh, when I was in Nantucket. Um, and it was so much better than the screen that I have. It popped even more, which is awesome. I'm definitely gonna look into trying to 
find a blank one of those. Um, I did have the opportunity to try one out with a split prism, but for my shooting, I just found that the split prism got in the way way too much, unfortunately, and it didn't really uh, fit my style for me. It kind of slowed me down uh, more so than I wanted. So that really plays to how modular the system is, so you can swap them out whenever you want, which is awesome. So not only if you just want to swap it out to have a different kind of focusing screen, if it breaks or cracks or has a really bad scratch, you don't have to worry about replacing the whole camera, you can just replace the one part. And the same goes for viewfinders as well. Um, I really have grown to love the waist level viewfinder, but even when I first started out, I was completely on uh, the traditional style where you'd actually have to put it up to your eye to see what you were shooting. Those kind of viewfinders really do work well, um, especially when you're doing stuff where you really need to make sure you're nailing focus. But it just added so much more size to the system um, that it just didn't really appeal to me. I really like the waist level finder because it collapses away and it actually makes the Hasselblad system, which is generally bigger than other systems, feel that much more compact. just up there before and we came down it ends here with kind of a dead end so I think we're just gonna head back now um, I did put a roll of HP 5 in which you probably already saw a couple frames of um, just kind of wanting to show how the color looks out of the Hasselblad and how some black and white looks but yeah um, overall really good hike I enjoy this place a lot more than I thought I would um, this was kind of the main area that I thought I'd be coming to see, but I think I really liked that open area with the tall grass a lot more than a lot of places I've seen actually, so 